Hey guys, it's Landon with RH, and this is going to be hopefully a short video where I show you how you can use Obsidian as a knowledge base or kind of internal wiki for your team. Uh, now there are some articles and videos that will tell you you can't use Obsidian for a team. It's made for personal use, but I don't think that's true. Uh, so why are we doing this? We, we've got we've tried a couple different things um, as an internal wiki. We tried uh, Notion for a little while. I couldn't get people to use it. Uh, we tried. Uh, right now we're kind of putting putting information that would be in a knowledge base in the teams in, te in our teams chat but that information gets buried and it can be it can be hard to find and hard to search for um, so I've been using obsidian uh, uh, for my personal note taking for a while now and I've got a couple of my people have seen it and have started using it and really like it so I think we can make this work I think we can we don't have a good solution but I think this could this could get traction so I wanted to show you guys how I plan on setting this up and uh, maybe it's something that'll, that'll work for your team. Um, and I don't know if this is going to work yet. It's an experiment that we're going to run. So I've got um, Obsidian open. I have a folder on our network now that everybody can get to called RH Vault. And it's pretty simple. So the hopper is just a folder where people can kind of brain dump. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go through on a regular basis, a couple times a month maybe, and we'll, we'll clean up the notes that are in there and figure out where to put them. So that's just... If somebody just wants to do a quick brain dump, they don't know where something belongs exactly yet or it needs some cleanup or some formatting, they can put it in there. Administration is just uh, things that we might need for, for plugins or other things in Obsidian. For example, I've got a templates folder in here. So most of our users won't necessarily use that. Um, and then I've got a folder where we can put attachments like screenshots or PDF articles or things like that. Okay, so the main part of the, of the knowledge base is in this folder. Zero one knowledge base. And what I'm gonna do there is just, we're gonna have top level folders. And then, uh, I don't know that the folder structure is gonna be really deep, but these are just areas where we can kind of store information that will help other team members potentially in the future. So for example, I have a business folder, there's nothing in it there, but I might I might store videos or podcasts, links to podcasts or videos or, or links to articles on business that I think my team would enjoy. Um, I've got one for code slinging here. You can see I've got a I've got a note for Visual uh, Studio Code. I've got a folder for equipment. Uh, we've got some notes on our UAV lidar system here. This will probably get a lot longer. Uh, then I've set up a, a folder up for software, and I've got um, just some blank notes yet. Some blank notes that haven't been filled out yet for some of the different software we use. But you can see like I've got this video, uh, this note for Inkscape with some links to some of my recent videos and some other resources on YouTube. Uh, I started doing that for QGIS, so we'll be able to flesh some of this out. Um, you know, we're just adding links and, and other he helpful information. Um, it doesn't have to be a link, so you might say something like this. You might just do a heading here. You might even do something like this. You could say, see Elena for help with BricsCAD licensing. So Elena's kind of my CAD manager in training. I can't spell licensing apparently. And then you might uh, you might say our current version of BricsCAD is version 2024.1 so it doesn't have to be links you could say um, learning resources right? and we could put like let's say a link to the official BricsCAD YouTube channel so I'm not going to dictate a bunch of this structure I'm gonna let my people define it. Um, whoop, that's not what I wanted there, sorry. So I'm gonna let my people define that. Um, people define that channel, or define that structure. Sorry, I wanted to say this is the YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna let it be fairly freeform, although we'll probably develop some some um, some templates, some example templates. You know, we might, we might have a, temp a template like this uh, for all of our software so but I'm gonna kind of let this grow from the bottom up I hope uh, I'll be doing a lot of this but I hope to, I can get some of my people to do some of it too 
um, and it's just it's going to be a way we can share this kind of knowledge with everybody. Stuff that's not written down in other places, you know. People, everybody has like their their own favorites in their internet browser, or they've got a little folder um, in the network or on their hard drive where they store you know cool stuff. I, and I, we want to be we want folks to be able to share some more of that. So I'm hoping this this knowledge base will allow us to do that. Uh, now, why, why, what are some reasons why you might want to do this in Obsidian? It's super flexible. It's got themes you can install. It's got really cool plugins, which I talk about in some other videos. There's lots of videos on YouTube about that. Uh, what I really like is there's no vendor lock-in, so these are just folders and plain text files and Markdown on your high drive. So you can switch to a different tool if you want, if that tool supports Markdown. Um, it's e it's pretty easy to learn. The formatting's pretty easy to learn. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think it's a good solution. So we're going to try this out and see how it works. Um, let me know if you're using Obsidian for a team uh, or if you're using Obsidian as a knowledge base for a team. I'd like to hear from you. You can contact me directly or post in the comments for this video on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.